Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your hour. Good morning all. It's about 5:20. I'm just about to head off my head off for my walk. So just to be a bit, a bit active and get some exercise in. So I hope you're all well back in the communities, enjoying yourselves and keeping safe. Talk soon. Cheers. taken me about 31 minutes to walk 3 k's so I'll head back home we're turning around point which is about 3 k's so cheers guys hi guys I've just completed 6, six kilometers um, from my place which is down Walbert Court down along Albrecht Drive and down Lara Pinta about 3 k's down and then returned. So it's taken me about 63 minutes to complete that. So morning's beautiful. Nice and cool. It's 12 degrees I think this morning when I left home for my walk. So the Urara Brumbies, bit of a challenge. Maybe send in some of your your pics on your run or your walk back home, whether it's around the community, around, around, the, around your footy oval. Um, anyway, have a great day. Cheers. The hour hand is one, and the minute hand is nine. What time is it, Mr. Mark? This now, we've, because we're working on quarter two, the big hand is now going nearer to the two. So this would be quarter to two, or one forty-five. The hour hand is pointed to the seven, and the minute hand is pointed to nine. What time is it, Mr. Mark? Remember again, the hour hand will be moving more towards the next number, which would be eight. So that would be 7.45 or a quarter to eight. Two of our words of the week this week are cents and dollars. How many cents are there in one dollar? One hundred. We can make a dollar in many different ways using our coins. For example, we could use two fifty cents. Fifty plus fifty equals a dollar. We can use five twenty cents. All five twenties equal a dollar. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, one hundred equals a dollar. What if we have some different coins in our pocket and we want to add them up to see how much money we've got? Another way we can make a dollar, we've got a fifty, a ten, uh, I've got another ten, and another ten, and two more tens. So I've got 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, one dollar. One more lot of coins I've got here. 50, 
I've got a 20, got a 20, and I've got a 10. So I've got 50, 70, 90, 100 equals a dollar. See how many different ways you can make a dollar. Good morning, Miss Priscilla. Good morning. <laughs> Just like to ask you, what, what do you spend your money on? I like to spend my money on good experiences. So going on holidays with friends and family, having a good time. Uh, I like to spend money on my bike because I can see some beautiful places in nature um, and it doesn't cost me anything in petrol. Um, and I also like to spend money on artwork because it's something nice that I can put in my house and I have it for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. Hey guys, so we've had a good look at some of the important words we use, like currency. Does anyone remember what currency means? Money. And we looked at why it's important to know what all the different notes and coins mean in our Australian currency. Let us know how you go. And please do let us know what are some things you guys buy in community and how much do they cost? Maybe we'll compare how much they cost here in town. All right, that's enough about money. We'll see you guys later. Hello, Mr. Stern. What are some things that our college uses its money for? At uh, Clontarf Academy, some of our money is spent on uh, going on camps with the fellas. Uh, we do several camps through the year, some to go and play in footy carnivals, and of course there's the big end of the year camp where we go interstate. So money gets spent on that. We also spend money on food. We've always got food around the academy room because we know young men get very, very hungry. So <laughs> plenty of food on hand, money gets spent on that. And probably one of the other things that we spend a bit of money on is sports equipment. Sport plays a, a big role in the program. Our morning footy training sessions, but we're always trying different sports. So you've got to have plenty of sports equipment on hand. Hi, welcome to Urara to You News. Today we're going to be looking at the career of hairdressing. But before we do that, we're going to cross live to our weather reporter, Mr. T, to see what the weather's going to be like today. Mr. T? It's hot! Thanks, Mr. T. We're going to cross live now to our local reporter who is going to be interviewing Miss Paula about a career in hairdressing. So, G'day, Paula, how are you? Good, how are you, Will? Um, so, first question, how did you choose hairdressing as a career? Well, my cousin worked in a hairdressing salon and a job came up in her salon and she told me about it, so I took a week's trial for work and loved it mm -hmm. and at the end of that trial they offered me the job, so that's how I became a hairdresser. Sounds pretty fantastic, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> what parts of the job do you enjoy? Oh, I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy making people feel better about themselves. I really enjoy cutting and mm -hmm. I enjoy upstyles. Some of my favourite parts of the job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any parts of hairdressing that you don't enjoy? Um, I didn't really love perming or don't really love perming. I've, now that I have been a hairdresser for a long time, it's not so bad. But when I first started, it used to take me a long time to wind a perm. So that was one of the jobs that I used to hate doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Can you describe a normal day uh, of working in a hair salon? So a normal day working in a hair salon, you start, well you get in a little early, you get in about 8.30, quarter to 9. Your first client arrives at 9 o'clock and you finish at 5.30, but in between you'd start with cleaning, wiping down the shelves, wiping down your, your workstation and just running through your appointment book so you knew what you had for the day so you could sort of plan for it. And yeah, and then at the end of the day, you clean up obviously, and then you also do the till and work out the money and the takings for the day and work out your clients that you've done. So yeah, that's an average day in a hair salon. So how long was your apprenticeship for, Paula? My apprenticeship was four years. The first two years I spent in the salon four days a week and one day a week at trade school. Yep. The second two years I spent on the job training inside the salon. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what are some career pathways you could go down once you've finished trade school? So apart from being inside the salon, you could go mobile, which is traveling around to people's houses or different communities and doing hair. You could also be a hairdresser for 
TV and film. I am. Yeah, and you could be a hairdresser for a famous person, or then you could yeah. go on and do some more study, and do your cert for and become a trainer and train yeah. people in hairdressing. But being a hairdresser, where has that taken you? Well, for me, I've actually had lots of different types of jobs in hairdressing. Obviously, starting off in the salon with my apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. And then I had an opportunity to work in a salon that would go up into the hospital in Adelaide and do hair for wow. people. Wow, amazing. Yeah. And I've also had people come to my home and I've had a home salon. And for a while I rented a chair. So what that means, Will, is I rented a space like this here that Lisa's sitting on where I would have my own clients, my own colours, my own products, my own business, but just in this one small space. So thank you so much for your time today, Paula. It's been fun being here interviewing you in your hair salon. And thank you also to our customer for being so patient with us and using your time. No problems. Thanks, Will. Right. Thank Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Paula. Thank you all for tuning in today. Stay safe. Keep learning. See you next time. Bye. Good afternoon to our students, families and friends of the college and welcome to another exciting episode of Health with Mr Zane and with Mr Liko. Last time we introduced social well-being to you all. We looked at what social well-being is and how social well-being can affect us. We also provided for you two worksheets to complete. We hope that you have worked hard towards completing these worksheets as this will continue to help you understand how the choices that you make can affect different parts of our well-being. Today, we will continue to talk about social well-being. We will also remind you of what social well-being means and how it affects us. We will show you some more scenarios that you, our students may have experienced here at Yarara College and try to help you understand how the choices that you make have an impact on your social well-being. At the end of today's lesson, we will have a simple worksheet for you to complete to help you with your understanding of social well-being. Let's head over to Mr Zane, who will remind you about what social well-being is. Social well-being is having good and positive relationships and being able to live with, talk and connect with other people, most importantly your family and your friends. Watch these scenarios and have a think about whether the choices that these students are making are having a positive or a negative impact on their own and other people's social well-being. Come on, let's take a look. In this scenario, you will see Buddy and Jordan having fun and playing an exciting game of table tennis. Have a look at the way they socialise, especially at the end where they talk to each other. What are they talking about? Is it a happy conversation? How does this relate to their social well-being? Take a look and see what ideas you can come up with. Man, you're really good at this, aren't you? Oh, thanks, man. Man. We're looking for another player to come and join our club. I think you'd be amazing at our club. Come and join us. You'd be awesome. Thanks for the invite. I don't really know anyone who plays around here, though. Don't worry, man. I'll introduce you to all the fellas. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll meet back here. Sweet, bro. See you then. Sweet, bro. That's us. In this scenario, Buddy and Renisha are playing Connect Four. Another student sees Buddy and Renisha having fun and asks to join in. Think about the interactions between the students, how they talk to each other, and if they decide to include the other student in their game. After you watch the whole clip, decide whether you think that the way that Jordan and Renisha acted towards the other student would have had a positive or a negative impact on that person's social well-being. And think about how that person would feel afterwards. Let's take a look. Oh, one more. 
connect four. Loser. Hey, that looks like fun. Can I play? Ooh, who are you? You're not from our community. Friends only. Go away. Another game? Yep. Yeah. Alright. Oh. oh. Okay then. To help you with what we have learned today, please turn to page 12 and page 13 of your week 3 workbooks. This is a chance for you to think about and write down some ideas about what your family, your friends and your teachers might say about you. Do you think they will say you are a happy person? You are good at sport? That you work hard in class? That you are polite and always use your manners? These are just some examples to help you understand social well-being and how your connection with others can impact on how they relate and talk to you. This can be with your families, your friends, teachers and other social circles. Write down as many positive ideas as you can. Next time, we'll move on to the next part of our overall well-being. This being our physical well-being. We will introduce you to what physical well-being is and how some of the choices that you make have an impact on your physical well-being. So stay strong as we continue to take you on a journey to making good choices and understanding your own well-being better. Till next time. Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You Music. Today we're going to learn how to make castanets. Alright guys, so what we're going to need to make our own castanets, these are castanets, they're from a country called Spain in Europe and they belong to the percussion family. Okay. So these are the things we're going to need. We're going to need a piece of thick cardboard about this size, a ruler, a hammer, a pen, something to draw around. So what I've got here is the back part of my phone. So it needs to be about the same size as a phone to draw around. A cutting knife. You need four metal bottle tops. Okay. A pair of pliers. And some glue. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is draw around a rectangle onto the cardboard. So you need to do two of these. So first one like that. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. Now we need to cut them out. So you take your knife, be very careful, could be very sharp, this one's very sharp. And you can use your ruler to make the line straight. If the cardboard's thick, then go over it twice. And make sure you're on a surface that, you know, doesn't matter if it gets too damaged. Okay, so now you should have two identical rectangles. Now the next thing we need to do is you need to make a line in the middle, okay? So you measure it, get your ruler and measure all the way across. So this one here is 15 centimeters. Now half of 15 is seven and a half. So go along, put a mark there, 7.5, draw a line. Do this on the other one. So seven and a half centimeters there. Draw a line. Now what we need to do now 
we need to be very careful because we need to make a cut along that line, but we can't go all the way through the cardboard. You only have to go just a tiny bit. You have to be very careful. Just make a light groove along there, not too deep. And the reason we do that is so it stays together and we can bend it like this. It's like a duck, quack quack. Can do that on the other one as well. So. Now the next thing we need to do, so put your knife away. You get your bottle tops and then you need to get the pliers and you need to bend them out so they're almost flat. Okay, bend out the sides like this. All right, now once you've done that, you need to grab your hammer and make them a bit more flat. So be very careful you don't bang your fingers when you do this. Okay. Now once you've made all those pretty flat, they don't have to be completely flat, so don't worry too much. We need to glue them onto your castanets. Okay. So I'll line them all up, face down. So you're gluing on the back of the, of the bottom top. Now we'll stick them on. Try and get it in the middle of each section. Now we'll leave those to dry for about six hours and we'll come back later and test them out. All right guys, now the glue has dried on the bottle tops. You can uh, get some sticky tape, roll it up and stick it on there so that it doesn't fall out your hand. So do one on this side and one on that side on both of them. And let's see them in action. Wada! Welcome, Welcome back. back to another deadly episode of Word of the Day. I'm Miss Moesha. And I'm Miss Alois. The word of the day is... Alangwa. Meaning bush, bush banana. banana. Alangua. 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 Yum. Alangua. 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 Have a go at saying alangua, meaning bush banana. We'll see you mob next time. Bye. Bye. has been thinking about some describing words or adjectives he could use to describe his community but he was finding it really hard he decided to go outside and take a walk around he went through his five senses to try and help him to think of some descriptive words what does his community look like my community looks red and dusty what does it sound like in the mornings it is peaceful and i can hear the birds 
In the afternoons, it is noisy and I can hear laughter. What does it feel like? The dirt is soft to touch and the breeze feels warm. What about smells? I can smell smoke from the campfires and at dinner time I can smell my grandma cooking. Speaking of dinner time, what can you taste? I can taste the juicy meat. It's nice and salty too. Going through the five senses really helped Olaf to describe his community. He couldn't wait to get on the phone and tell his friends. When I'm at Urara, I think, what a nice place to be. I look around and the grass is always green. I'm on my way to chapel. In my country, the trees are very leafy and it rains a lot. Here in the central desert, it is much drier. Look at this big old date palm. It is so tall. The outside bark is really rough and dry. Another thing we have here is the school bell. The traditional medal for these bells is a bronze. That's what makes it look so nice. Remember the dining room? What nice smells come from here? Chicken, beef, hot chips. I think I'm going to walk outside. Oh my word, it is so cold. Let me get inside. Oh, much better. I've got my coat on, my orange coat. And it is so much cosier and so much warmer to walk outside. All right, just need a nice shady spot to sit while I read. Oh, that rock's just too hard, oh, too uncomfortable. Grass might be wet from last night. Oh, good, here are these seats. I'll go sit here. Oh, these stories just look so good, and I really like the illustrations. Looks like there are some really good words here describing their scenes. So they are some of the sights, sounds, smells, tastes and things you can touch here at Urara. Did the words help you to imagine those places? Well now it's time for you to do the week four literacy worksheet. Remember, use some adjectives or descriptive words like we have today to let us imagine your place or country. Also, please use a dictionary or Google to find more words and to check your spelling. We're proud of you all. Have fun. Love from Urara. Hi guys, it's Danielle here again at AgriFoods and I've got Kate with me today and we are going to be harvesting a couple of lettuces that are ready to be picked and eaten. So, nice and easy for these ones. It's nothing too complicated with harvesting lettuces. We're gonna use our spade again, like we did last time planting the seedlings. But this time we're gonna use it to dig around the base of the plant and pull it all the way out from the roots. So what we're gonna do is just use your hand and we're just gonna move some of these leaves out of the way so we don't damage them. And then we're gently going to push the spade into the soil around the bottom of the lettuce plant. Yep. Can we just go straight down? Straight down is perfect. Yep, and then we're just going to use that to lift the plant up. All right, now we've got that out. You can see that there's still, and just lift that plant out. Perfect. So now that we've got that out, you can see that there's quite a bit of soil at the bottom here. We're just going to use our hand and we're just going to shake off the rest of that as much as we can. And we'll have to give it a bit of a wash before we can put it in any salads. But there you go, there is two lettuces freshly picked, ready to eat, which is um, much better than anything you get from the supermarket. So uh, thanks for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Challenge again, right down the outside, it's Miss Chris, a racing two now, Miss Lisa on the inside, Miss Chris on the outside, charging home with Miss Lisa, spots the line and first away, she flies home to win. From Miss Chris second, Miss Fleur third, and yeah, not far behind Miss Deb. That'd be a better call than the first one. Good morning! Hey, hey. Welcome back to Urara! <laughs>